What happens when a dangerous radioactive event occurs or we encounter a device that involves radioactive material? How do first responders react and how do we make the jobs of those searching for those materials easier? And how do we realistically train people to use their detectors and respond in case of a nuclear emergency? In this SNTR preview, we take a look at two Lawrence Livermore solutions to these challenges. Finding and responding to sources of dangerous radiation presents a pretty thorny situation. One critical issue is preparation. How do you train a first responder for a situation in which there is radioactive material spewed all over the place or hidden somewhere? We can't really use dangerous isotopes in training exercises, although these would provide full realism. Virtual reality doesn't yet allow operators to train with actual instruments or to fully experience the environments that responders are likely to face. To try and make training both as safe and as realistic as possible, Lawrence Livermore researchers have developed something called a spectroscopic injection pulser, or an SIP. Using SIP dramatically improves responder preparedness against a wide gamut of realistic scenarios. Emergency responders go out the door with a variety of instruments. They have some equipment that's simply there to protect them, to assess whether or not there's a radiation dose that they need to worry about, and then tell them to back away. They go out with, um, in fact, I can show some. That, that these are compact devices, like a pager-like device that they would wear on their belt, or, or, or similar sorts of things. They also go out the door with much more uh, capable equipment. This is sort of on the other end of the spectrum uh, in capability with uh, what we call diagnostic devices, devices that they can use to identify the source and really get detailed information of, of what it is. Um, the device that we've created, the spectroscopic injection pulser, uh, interfaces with these different device types. We've demonstrated it thus far with the more sophisticated device that I just showed. Uh, and uh, basically on a pulse by pulse basis, feeds signals into those detectors that are appropriate for the detector type and basically tricks the detector into believing the source is there. So as they approach the source, the signal strength increases. As they back away, it drops off. If it's a dosimetry-like device, that would mean a, an increase or a decrease in the dose rate that's observed, for example. So they're basically able to use that suite of instrumentation in a manner that uh, it maintains the real physics, it enables the suite of instruments they deploy with to operate in a, in a self-consistent manner, which is not something they can do currently, but also maintains all the fidelity. So if they want to really analyze the data, they can. The data is there and it's really representative of something real. So the intention ultimately is to get to something that's very compact. Where we are right now is sort of a hybrid in between. This is sort of the next generation where we have a, uh, a development board that has integrated with it GPS, all the functionalities that we want, and, a, and, and an interface, but it's not as compact as we want. SIP also complements a related Livermore advancement, a software program called the Optimization Planning Tool for Urban Search, or OPTIS for short. OPTIS is designed to help teams that sweep urban areas searching for a potential radioactive threat. By evaluating the urban area under investigation, the estimates of background radiation, potential threat source materials and locations, and available human and detector resources, OPTIS calculates optimum search vehicle routes for responders. In addition, for locations that are searched by teams on foot, OPTIS computes the optimal amount of time that the team should spend in a given area to maximize the probability of detection. Both SIP and OPTIS allow our reactions to radioactive events to be much faster and safer, which is a key part of our national security. If you're interested in learning more about the field of radioactive materials detection and response, you can check out the full issue of the July-August SNTR magazine online and subscribe to this channel for more videos letting you in behind the scenes on the science happening at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory.